A carbon linked to a carbonyl group is referred to as an alpha carbon. And the alpha carbon of carbonyl compounds is relatively acidic because of the electron withdrawing nature of the carbonyl group. Deprotonation of the alpha carbon leads to the formation of the conjugate base of a carbonyl compound. And this type of structure is referred to as an enolate. The enolate is resonance stabilized. This is part of the reason the alpha position is acidic at all. And it consists of, in one resonance form, a carbon-carbon double bond adjacent to an anionic oxygen. In the other resonance form, we have a carbon-oxygen double bond adjacent to an anionic carbon atom. The acidity of the alpha position can also result in an isomerization process that places a carbon-carbon double bond in the structure and a hydroxyl group. This structure, which is called an enol, has the same molecular formula as the original carbonyl compound or keto form, but a hydrogen has changed positions. Notice we have a CH2 group in the enol, where we have a CH3 group in the starting carbonyl compound, and the carbonyl oxygen has picked up a hydrogen in the enol form. In this series of videos, we're going to talk about the formation and structure of enols and enolates and their substitution reactions, substitutions at the alpha position involving the alpha position as a nucleophile. One general point to make here is that we can now notice an interesting pattern of reactivity within the carbonyl group and the alpha carbon as a whole. We're used to the carbonyl carbon acting as an electrophile. But what the enol and enolate especially show us is that the alpha carbon has the potential to act as a nucleophile. And so we see an alternating pattern of reactivity, electrophilic atoms adjacent to nucleophilic atoms. This is fairly common in organic structures because of the way bond polarization works, and the carbonyl group is a great example of this. We've looked in detail at the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon and nucleophilic additions to that carbon. Here we're going to study reactions of the alpha carbon as a nucleophile. Carbonyl compounds are mildly acidic at the carbons bound to the carbonyl group, specifically the alpha carbons. And when we say mildly acidic, we mean that the pKa value of a simple ketone is about 20. Acetone is a prototypical example. And if we look at the pKa value for deprotonation of, say, the hydrogen in a methyl ketone by water, we end up with a pKa value here of about 20. So the alpha carbons of carbonyl compounds are more acidic than, say, terminal alkynes, which have a pKa of about 25, but less acidic than alcohols, which have pKa's around 15. And this 20 is a nice benchmark to know. A typical, simple ketone has a pKa value of 20. Another thing to note is that this is much, much lower than the pKa value of a simple alkane, which is up around 45 or 50 or even larger. The alpha carbons of carbonyl compounds, then, are much more acidic than alkanes. And the reason for this has to do with resonance stabilization of the conjugate base. This is a resonance effect. So let's redraw the conjugate base of the general carbonyl compound we drew above. This structure contains a non-bonding lone pair, which is a good electron source adjacent to a carbon-oxygen double bond, a polarized pi bond, which can act as an electron sink. And so we have the capability of resonance within this structure. The resulting resonance form has negative charge on oxygen and a carbon-carbon double bond. What this resonance form helps us see is that negative charge is shared between oxygen and carbon. And in fact, the resonance form with negative charge on oxygen is likely more important than the C- resonance form because in this structure on the right, negative charge is residing on a more electronegative atom. This resonance-stabilized conjugate base of a carbonyl compound is called an enolate because of the carbon-carbon double bond, and all eight because of the negative charge on oxygen in this most important resonance form. Before we leave this slide, it's worth noting that other electron withdra withdrawing groups also acidify the carbons that they're linked to through a very similar effect. And so I want to show this in general for a generic electron withdrawing group. Let's recall the general structure of an electron withdrawing group. All electron withdrawing groups consist of a polarized pi bond, either double or triple, between two atoms of very different electronegativity. The atom X that's connected to, for example, the alpha carbon is less electronegative than Y. This means it has partial positive charge, and Y, the more electronegative atom, has partial negative charge. Let's consider what happens when we link up a generic electron withdrawing group with a methyl group. And let's just say we had a double bond between X and Y. Now, Y is relatively electronegative. 
this means that it can stabilize negative charge fairly well. So when we deprotonate the CH3 group, we end up with a conjugate base that's well stabilized by resonance. Notice that even in this generic structure, we saw a specific example for the carbonyl group at left, but even in this generic structure, we have a polarized pi bond where Y is a relatively electronegative atom, good at stabilizing negative charge, adjacent to a non-bonding lone pair on carbon. This means that for any electron withdrawing group, whether it's a carbonyl group, cyano, nitro, anything, we can draw an alternative resonance form in which the negative charge, which was generated by deprotonation, is shared over the carbon and the Y atom. It's this sharing of negative charge and the resonance structures that illustrate it that help explain why alpha carbons, carbons alpha to electron withdrawing groups, are relatively acidic, relative to, for example, unsubstituted alkanes.